the next point. We should ensure that whatever we see is clear. That means work is being done and we can see that it is in opposite direction. My great students, I'm still your mathematics teacher, Mr. Yaku Fidelix. By the grace of God, we are treating a topic today known as simultaneous linear and quadratic equations. I repeat that, simultaneous linear and quadratic equations. Now, we are going directly to examples. Solve the following equations. A, 3x plus y equals 10. 3x plus y equals 10. 2x squared plus y squared equals to 19. 2x squared plus y squared equals to 19. Now, before we go to solution, I want you to note, my dear student, if you look at the two equations, the first one is linear. Why is it linear? Because the power of the two variables there is one. So that is why we call it a linear equation. But when you look at the second equation, the highest power of x is two, and that of y is also two. So it is described as the quadratic equation. That is why we tag the topic linear and quadratic equation. Now, in the solution, 3x plus y equals 10. I name it equation 1. And 2x squared plus y squared equals 19. I name it equation 2. Now, in solving, I use equation 1 and make y the subject of the formula. I'm saying I started with equation one. So I want to advise you. In solving problems involving linear and quadratic equations, I'm advising you to always start with the linear equation to make your work easier. You are also free to start with the quadratic equation, but certainly, if you are not careful, it will lead you to an error. So advisably, always start with the linear equation. Now, in equation one, the coefficient of y is one. That is why I now say from equation one, my y equals 10 minus 3x. My y equals 10 minus 3x. That means I made y the subject of the formula. I made y the subject of the formula. Which shows that y equals to 10 minus 3x gives equation three. Gives equation three. Now, substitute the value of y in equation two. Substitute the value of y in equation two. In doing that, the first term is 2x squared written. 2x squared written. Then the second term is y squared. y squared. Now, that becomes plus. In place of y, I wrote 10 minus 3x. Because the value of y in equation one is in equation three is 10 minus 3x. That is why y here is replaced by 10 minus 3x raised to the power of two because y has the square. Equals 19. Equals 19. Now, we need to expand the expression 10 minus 3x square. 10 minus 3x square can be written as 10 minus 3x in bracket times 10 minus 3x, the second bracket. 10 minus 3x times 10 minus 3x, both are in bracket. Now, the expansion goes 10 times 10 gives 100. 10 times minus 3x gives minus 30x. Pick the second term in the expression 10 minus 3x, which is minus 3x, and multiply by the second expression, which is also 10 minus 3x. That gives 
minus 3x times 10, that gives minus 30x. Minus 3x times minus 3x, that gives us plus 9x squared. I take that again for clarity. 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times minus 3x is minus 30x. Then now pick minus 3x in the first expression. Minus 3x times 10 is minus 30x. Minus 3x times minus 3x, that gives us plus 9x squared. Now, the equation becomes 2x squared plus 100 minus 30x minus 30x plus 9x squared equals to 19. Now, what follows next is I collected the like terms. I collected the like terms. That becomes 2x squared plus 9x squared minus 30x minus 30x plus 100 equals to 19. 2x squared plus 9x squared, just like 2 pencils plus 9 pencils, that will give you 11 pencils. So 2x squared plus 9x squared gives 11x squared. Then the next, minus 30x, minus 30x. The idea of the directed numbers need to be followed. That is why I had treated that earlier, because I know we always apply it in mathematics. Minus 30x, minus 30x, by the idea of directed numbers, that gives us minus 60x. That gives us minus 60x. Then, plus 100 equals to 19. So the equation now becomes 11x squared minus 60x plus 100. When plus 19 crosses to the left, becomes negative 19. When plus 19 crosses to the left, becomes negative 19. That is why I have 11x squared minus 60x plus 100 minus 19. And on the left hand side, you'll be left with nothing, which is replaced by zero which is replaced by zero. Now, what is 100 minus 19? 100 minus 19 gives 81. Gives 81. So the new equation is 11x squared minus 60x plus 81 equals zero. 11x squared minus 60x plus 81 equals zero, which is now a quadratic equation, and we are to solve it. Now, we have gotten a quadratic equation in which we have to solve it. Now, the first step in solving quadratic equation is to take the first term, multiply it by the constant. The first term, multiply it by the constant. And the first term is 11x squared. Well, the constant is plus 81. That shows 11x squared times 81 will give us 891x squared. 11x squared times 81 will give us 891x squared. You can now see that to get the right factors, it's not going to be easy. That is why I have told you a principle when we started this learning. I told you, when a number is larger, what you are going to do, you express that number as a product of its prime factors. You express that number as a product of its prime factors, as follows, 891. 3 into 891 gives 297. 3 into 891 gives 297. 3 into 297 gives 99. 3 into 297 gives 99. 3 into 99 gives 33. 3 into 99 gives 33. 3 into 33 gives 11. 3 into 33 gives 11. And finally, 11 into 11 equals 1. 11 into 11 equals 1. 
This implies if you find the product of 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 11, certainly you are going to get 891. So from here, we are going to deduce our factors. And the factors are, if you pick the first three, three times three times three, that will give you 27. Three times three times three, the first three up, that will give you 27. You can see 27 is written there. And three times 11, that gives us 33. Three times 11. That gives us 33. When you multiply 27 by 33, certainly it will give you 891. So the required factors now to fix in the signs becomes minus 27x and minus 33x. That shows if you multiply minus 27x by minus 33x, it will give you 891 x squared. And you also add minus 27x plus minus 33x. Minus 27x plus minus 33x. It will give you the middle term, which is minus 60x. It will give you the middle term, which is minus 60x. Now, the equation becomes, 11x square, in place of minus 60x, I replace that by the two terms, minus 27x, minus 33x, plus 81, equals 0. Now, we are going to factorize by grouping. Factorization by grouping. The first group is 11x square, minus 27x. 11x square, minus 27x, and the HCE up there is x. So I brought the x out. In bracket, 11x squared, divided by x, you have 11x. Minus 27x, divided by x, you have minus 27. So the first expression is x into 11x minus 27. Then the second group, the second group is Minus 33x plus 81. Minus 33x plus 81. And the HC up there is minus 3. The HC up there is minus 3. So I round wrote minus 3. I brought it out in bracket. Minus 33x divided by minus 3 will give you 11x. Minus 33x divided by minus 3 will give you 11x. And plus 81. Divided by minus 3 will give you minus 27. Plus 81 divided by minus 3, you will get minus 27. So now, the first, in the first group, I have 11x minus 27. And in the second group, I also have 11x minus 27. That shows 11x minus 27 is a common factor. 11x minus 27 is a common factor. So I now brought it out. Then, take the first expression, which is x into 11x minus 27. When you divide that, let me repeat that. Take the first expression, which is x into 11x minus 27. If you divide that by the common factor, 11x minus 27, you will be left with, you will be left with, you will be left with 11x mi minus 27 there. Then, let me take that again for clarity, please. Let me take that again for clarity. I say, when you look at the first group, 11x minus 27, and the second group, we also have 11x minus 27. That shows 11x minus 27 is a common factor. 
So I brought it out. I wrote 11x minus 27 as the first expression. Then, if you use the first expression, that is x into 11x minus 27, divide by the common factor, 11x minus 27, you will be left with x. x into 11x minus 27, divide by the common factor, which is 11x minus 27, you will be left with x. And also, minus 3 into 11x minus 27. Minus 3 into 11x minus 27. Also divided by the common factor, which is 11x minus 27. You will be left with minus 3. You will be left with minus 3. So, the two expressions on the left are 11x minus 27 in bracket into x minus 3 equals to 0. Now, I pick the first expression. 11x, either 11x minus 27 equals to 0. Or x minus 3 equals to 0. So if you consider 11x minus 27 equals to 0, to find the value of x, I divided both sides by the multiplier or the coefficient of x, which is 11. So 11x divided by 11 equals to minus 27 crosses become positive 27. 27 divided by 11. Now, 11x divided by 11, the answer is x. You'll be left with x. Equals to 27 divided by 11, the answer is 2 whole number 5 over 11. So our x equals 2 whole number 5 over 11. Or, pick the second expression there, x minus 3 equals to 0. x minus 3 equals to 0. To find the value of x, your x becomes 0 plus 3, which is equals to 3. So in this case, your x is either 2 whole number 5 over 11 or x equals to 3. Let's go. Now, since we have gotten the corresponding values of x, we are to substitute the value of x in equation 3 for y. Substitute the values of x in equation 3 for what? For y. Now, what is our the value of x? x is given, x is gotten as 27 over 11. And the equation 3 is y equals 10 minus 3x. So our y now equals to 10 minus 3 times the value of x. y now equals to 10 minus 3 times the value of x, which is 27 over 11. And when you multiply minus 3 times 27 by 11, it will give you minus, 87, minus 81 over 11. Now, take the LCM. The LC and the denominators, that is 1 and 11, is 11. So, 1 into 11, the answer is 11. And 11 times 10 give us 110. 11 times 10 give us 110. Also, 11 into 11 is 1. And 1 multiplied by 81 give us 81. 1 multiplied by 81 give us 81. So, the numerator is... 110 minus 81. 110 minus 81. All over the denominator, which is 11. And of course, that will give you 29 over 11. And 29 divided by 11, the answer is 2 whole number 7 over 11. 2 whole number 7 over 11. Also, Take the second value of x, which is 3, and substitute in equation 3 also. So that gives us y now equals to 10 minus 3 times 3. 10 minus 3 times 3. And 3 times 3 equals to 9. So y now becomes 10 minus 9, and the answer is 1. 10 minus 9, and the answer is 1. Conclusively, our required solution is, in bracket, 
two whole number, 5 over 11, comma, and two whole number, 7 over 11. Two whole number, 5 over 11, comma, then I have two whole number, 7 over 11. Then the second one is 3, comma, 1. 3, comma, 1. Let me explain the meaning of this solution, the way I wrote it. The first number, which is two whole number, 5 over 11, represent the first value of x. The first value of x. That shows when x was, when x was two whole number, 5 over 11, our y was gotten as two whole number, 7 over 11. So two whole number, 5 over 11, represent the value of x, while two whole number, 7 over 11, represent the value of y. Then the second one, 3 here represents the value of x. That is, when x was 3, our y was gotten as 1. When x was 3, our y was gotten as 1. So, 3 here represents the second value of x, while 1 represents the second value of y. So this is how you can write your solution. My dear students, let me again explain the meaning of this solution, the way I wrote it. The first value, which is 2 whole number, 5 over 11, stands for the first value of x. That is, when x was 2 whole number, 5 over 11, our y was gotten as 2 whole number, 7 over 11. That shows x is 2 whole number 5 over 11, while our y is 2 whole number 7 over 11. Then come to 3 comma 1. The 3 here represents the second value of x. That is, when, y was, when x was gotten as 3, our y was 1. Our y was 1. So 3 here represents the second value of x, while 1 represents the second value of y. My dear student, before we close for the day, I have an assignment for you concerning the simultaneous linear and quadratic equation. Apply the same principle as I have explained. And by the grace of God, you'll appreciate the topic so well. So ensure you work on this assignment. The assignment goes, Solve the following equations. Number one, 3x squared minus 4y equals minus 1. 3x squared minus 4y equals minus 1. And 2x minus y equals 1. And 2x minus 1 equals 1. I take that again. 1, 3x squared minus 4y equals minus 1. And 2x minus y equals 1. Number 2, x square minus y square equals 27. x square minus y square equals 27. And x plus y equals 3. x plus y equals 3. My students, take note. The first, the first assignment is... is Similar to the first example I've explained. While the second assignment, when you look at the second assignment, it involves the difference of two squares. It was actually one of the examples I supposed to work out. The term could not permit me. That is why we couldn't work it out. So the second example, you are to apply the difference of two squares. Or if you can still follow it, just like the way 
I walk the first example, you are still going to arrive at the same answer. You will still arrive at the same answer. My good students, I am still Mr. Yakubu Fidelix. Mr. Yakubu Fidelix. You can always get me, by the grace of God, through this number 080 2525 5287. And don't forget, I am together with my colleague, Mr. Patrick, an interpreter. So thank you very much for listening. Stay safe and keep learning well. Thank you.